Let's talk expansion. We finally got some news. We uh, the the Golden State Valkyries, the expansion draft is going to be held on December 6th. Um, and 10 days before that, so every other WNBA team, they can protect six players. That includes basically everybody. It includes your unrestricted free agents. It includes players you have rights on overseas, um, everybody. You can protect six players, and then out of that pool, the Valkyries will be able to select 12 players, one from each team. I do believe you can only select one from each team, right? You can't Correct. double dip, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. I, I wish you could because there's a few that I, I would really... Agree, there are some would, teams, yeah. Yeah, and then there's some teams where I'm like, I'm good. Pass. Like, pass, <laughs> pass. yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, find, we finally got some news. It's also going to be televised on ESPN, which I think is great. Not so great is that they are not going to be releasing who gets protected and not protected. Come on, WNBA, let's up the ante. Let's up the stakes. We'll, we'll make There's it a happen. lot of interest. We'll, we'll get this information yeah, let's, out let's for the public. Them. Let's shame them. Let's shame them. Let's get some investigative reporting onto this. Like, we got we got to get the information. Um, mm -hmm. It's got to happen. Uh, and it's also, like, frankly, for, for a team that, like, is – like has a lot of momentum behind it. Like they already have 17,000 season ticket deposits. And I was reading a story at your shop today, actually, about how only 5% of those deposits have come from Warriors season ticket holders. So this is a completely new fan base um, mm -hmm. that wants season tickets. And it's like, look, they're going to be watching a lot of bad basketball, but they could be watching some interesting players as well. Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on like what your strategy is for an expansion draft. You could just take, you know, the seventh or eighth player who is unprotected on these rosters, like a little used bench player who you think has enormous upside. Someone like Letitia Ami here comes to mind for me, you mm -hmm. know, who I think just has incredibly interesting physical tools and never gets to play in Atlanta. Or you could say, um, hey, we're not going to take anybody from your team, but, you know, try to negotiate some some trades on the side, like to try to just jump the process, maybe give away some draft equity now so that you have a little bit of a talent base to put like a, a reasonable team on the floor. Like I think about how the Vegas Golden Knights did their expansion draft, uh, you know, a few years back in the NHL. And they basically just uh, decided not to pick from a lot of teams and then like use that, um, like the, the carrot of not, you know, picking someone who's unprotected and using that to like make trades and get some, veterans and just build a, a squad right away and I think they ended up going to the Stanley Cup finals during their debut season didn't win but like they just decided to issue the idea of oh we need to take young prospects and like no we're just gonna have some fun and like make a real team right away even if it costs us some future assets and I don't know what Golden State's plan is gonna be I mean their uh, general manager comes from the New York Liberty who I think did a really measured job of building their team as is you know they didn't go all in right away but uh Expansion's gonna be weird because uh, I don't know if you've looked a lot at these rosters. Like, like you look at like the Seattle Storm, and like if they protect six players, then nothing in that interests me. If I'm a Golden State a GM, you know, like uh, there's there's nothing I want out of that. So uh, could, I do they wonder. Could get like, Nick Emil, right? I would imagine she'd be one of the six they protect. Cause they, well, they can protect. Like, imagine they obviously protect Jewel Lloyd, uh, mm -hmm. Skyler, Ezzy mm -hmm. McBoer, uh, Jordan Horston, um, and Gabby Williams, right? Yep. Um, so Nika's your sixth because they don't have to protect Neca because she is uh, an unrestricted yeah. free agent and cannot be court anymore. So. But if you're trying to win round, like, do you maybe protect Russell instead? I don't think no, so. No, you don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, um, this is my wishful thinking. I want Nika Mule on this. So here's my strategy. If I'm mm -hmm. if I'm the Valkyries, um, you know, you're not gonna play. You unless they go the gold, uh, the 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 gold, uh, the aces. Uh, sorry, the Golden Knights route. Right, right. Other um, Vegas team. <laughs> other Vegas team. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> the amount of teams that I had in my head before I had to go. I, as for as for as Canadian as I am, I do. It's not really watch embarrassing, hockey. Sarah, Honestly, <laughs> it's, it truly is. It truly is. It's shameful. I was just like a couple podcasts ago. I was talking about how I can't handle any spice. Like I like all the identity markers. None of them work for me. I am like an Indian person from Edmonton, and I don't eat spicy food, and I don't watch hockey. Um. So. <laughs> But here, my, my dream team was basically like, let's get everybody's favorites and then like a couple of high upside rookies. So I was like, okay, Nika Mule, which you're saying is not going to be available. Probably not going to be, be available. You never know. Could be. Yeah. You never know. Um, Kate Martin, potentially also another bubble candidate on the mm -hmm. Aces. Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do, let's, let's do the Aces too. So like after their core four, mm -hmm. you're kind of in, in a weird spot. Like, I guess like Kate Martin does make uh, sense to protect because everybody else is really old. Like you're not going to yeah, have like Alicia my... Clark. If but, I'm Natalie Williams, I'm probably protecting Alicia Clark and Kate Martin. Yeah. 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 And maybe maybe Tiffany Hayes just like retires. Tiffany Hayes to retire again. If, if, if she won't like, select her, she's just not gonna report. Like that's yeah, the way like, I think it's gonna she work. She just will not be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just will not be there. All right. Okay, this is ruining my strategy. No Nika Mule, new Kate, no Kate Martin. Diamond Miller? Is Diamond Miller gonna be available? I don't know. I don't know. 
It's okay. like, if you're Minnesota, right, do you want to protect six who are going to be crucial to you winning a title in 2025? Or are you like, I still have two years left of a rookie contract for Tommy Miller. Why would I waste this right now, you know? Um, who's, by the way, at the very least, least like, Alyssa Peely should be available. <laughs> yeah, Alyssa Peely, who's I'm a huge fan of. I love yeah. Alyssa Peely's game. Um, but, okay, like, give me a little, give me, like, a one-minute scouting report on Di Diamond Miller. Um, so I thought she was going to be like a really good player out of the 2023 draft. Obviously not as good as Leah Boston, but comfortably the second best player. She's a really good slasher, can do some point forward type things. Um, really interesting defender too. Like uh, Marilyn used her just all over the floor defensively, power forward, point guard, just all different spots as a hell point of attack. I mean, um, I just like her athleticism and uh, I... I don't mean to say this because like they have the same name, but she reminds me of like pre-injury Diamond to Shields mm. uh, before like Kalia Copper was like phased in as the new wing on the Chicago sky. Um, I just, I like her ability to get downhill and defend her position. And I think, you know, there's not a lot of forwards in the W who have that. Unfortunately, she's just never been able to stay healthy, which is another mm. um, like Diamond to Shields comp. Yeah. Got it. Um, do you think the sky are going to protect Kennedy Carter? I think you have to, right? Um, like, what are you doing in building your team if you're not protecting Kennedy Carter? Well, what are they doing? <laughs> is the larger question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, like, even if they aren't going to bring her back, they could protect her um, and, you know, try to... Because they have, her. like, her restricted free agent yeah. rights, so you can, mm -hmm. you know, get some value out of that at the very least. Yeah. That one's... That one, like, I'm, I'm curious. That was interesting. Yeah. yeah, that one's interesting. I, I would also like. I would go Michaela Onyenwere if they decide to mm -hmm. go with protecting Carter. Yeah, could go Izzy Harrison, but I kind of like I like Onyenwere in like a young team. Yeah, the the teams that intrigue me are like um, Minnesota because I think they have a lot of depth of talent, mm -hmm. and you're gonna have to make some decisions on like young versus contributing yeah. now. Um, Connecticut intrigues me because they have a couple of international prospects on the roster that they're probably oh. gonna want to protect. And, like, if you want to protect your first-round pick from last year, Layla Khan, does that mean Veronica Burton or Olivia Nelson Dota becomes available? Because I like both of them a lot, you yeah. know? Um, and then the Sparks intrigue me because I don't know that they have a depth of, like, great talent, but they're all kind of even talent. So there's some players that are going to be available, um, whether that's, like, a Stephanie Talbot if you end up building a veteran team or if Lee Rue becomes available or Ari McDonald. Like, there are options of people you could you know give some more minutes to see what they actually have um those three i think are the the most fascinating as to what their protected six are going to be because if they I, all I, have like rights to international yeah. players too so it just mm. it adds to the list of like who you have to worry about oh yeah that's so they have um i would have i had liru on my list for uh the Protecting? valkyries no for, oh, okay for the valkyries uh mm -hmm. because well yeah I like your game but b also just pandering i think that's smart sure. in your first year yeah. um <laughs> But you're saying there's other international prospects. So there are there are there other fan bases um, that they could potentially lure in by taking an international prospect and bringing them over. I mean, there's a lot of French prospects uh, okay. who didn't come over because of the Olympics. Uh, Minnesota has a French center, Mie Hirsch, uh, who they drafted last year, who has still not come over. I mentioned Connecticut's point guard, Leila Lacan. Dallas has a French point guard that they drafted last year, Carlo Leite, who I wonder if they'll be able yeah. to protect with all the other talent they have there. Um, so you could go that direction. You could go the Aussie direction. Um, I'm sure the Sparks probably won't be able to protect their young Aussie point guard, Shanice Swain, who also hasn't come over. Um, it all depends. I mean, like you could you could make this like a United mm -hmm. Nations sort of situation. Just take one of each, you know, and like try to figure <laughs> out which one yeah, which one really hits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the Dallas thing is interesting too because um, Liz Kitley also like is not signed to a rookie scale contract. Um, I, do do they have to protect her? So, like, for the Aces, if they want to protect Liz Kitley, they, they would have to do that. Yeah. And it would cost them potentially, like, on protecting Kate Martin. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. I would take Liz Kitley for sure if I was yeah. in Valkyries. Yeah. Interesting player. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, I think she's really talented. Obviously, like, she's had to rehab all year. But, I mean, you basically, like, it's, like, just, like, a rookie. Like, a rookie first exactly. pick. You get type, started on a rookie scale contract, too, level before the CBA changes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Yeah, the other what was the other one that I want to talk to you about that was interesting to me. I forget now. Um, but I think in general, like the Valkyries are pretty well positioned. I think their whole thing should just be like, oh, there's the other thing. The other I just remembered. I wish that uh, the Liberty could, like, I wish the Valkyries could take 
double dip because Liberty just yeah. have so many interesting offerings. Right. And then also like to my sort of strategy of like, let's just get fun people in here that people like for the first year so that like the season ticket holders have something to root for. And you guys just try, mm -hmm. you know, it's the first, the first few years of just having a team is just really difficult in terms of like, mm -hmm like your infrastructure and it sounds like they're doing a pretty good job of it already in the first place and like you know this is a joe lake of team I, I trust that they will be investing a lot they already have invested a lot but it, it does take you know like there's going to be a few growing pains so it's like let's have some fun obviously for the liberty one of kayla thornton or niara sabley is going to be available mm -hmm. whoever that is is like the one that you take but also right. Marine. Kind of wish that they could just take Marine Johannes. Yeah. As well. oh. <laughs> I can't believe I listed all of those freaking French players and forgot Marine Johannes. <laughs> <laughs> like what? By the way, anybody uh, who has not watched your YouTube highlights absolutely should, so they know what I'm talking about. Like, you might not win a lot of games, but you're gonna have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, again, team building strategy, right? It's yeah. it's very lucky for Golden State that they don't have to go through this expansion draft with another team, like presumably Toronto and Portland will have to do because then you really have to uh, strategize, like, which team do I take from first? Because then, like, the other team could, um, you know, get to the player I want. And, like, yeah, are they yeah. going to do, like, a snake draft? I'm curious how they how they end up doing it. I have it no with, idea like, how Toronto yeah. and Portland is going to work, but uh, like, Golden State pretty much just has the uh, the lay of the land. They can do whatever they, they want. They absolutely <laughs> do. And they're also, like, uh, uh, Toronto and, and Portland are also going to be dealing with, like, a more watered-down league, too, because mm -hmm. there's already going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, Oh, the Valkyries in there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Uh, that's me and I wonder if they only like oh, like protect five players for that one or something like that, just to like kind of make things fair. Which is also like, gosh, that would create some hard. It's like you can protect your starters and nobody else. Best yeah, of luck. Like, <laughs> best of luck. Yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, in general, I feel like they should just try to build some excitement, and then like after the new CBA, like they'll have they have their. I presume going to have deep pockets like just try to make a splash try to just be like hey look we have a good vibe here we're building a good culture we obviously still don't know the coach um and we're gonna have a practice facility we're gonna share stuff with the Warriors until we have our, all of our own stuff um and it's the Bay Area and we're selling out like I just I think yeah. they're really really well positioned yeah and the success of Bay FC and the NWSL is uh really heartening too just in terms of how that fan base has turned out for a team that is like you know kind of fringe playoff contention. So you don't need immediate success as long as you have, you know, one or two things to latch onto. Maybe, maybe Neko Gunke returns to her Stanford stomping grounds. You know, maybe you get uh, one of these myriad of free agents like a, a Bree Jones or someone to anchor your team around. But I don't know why I picked Bree Jones. She's not really the flashiest type. But like, I think Neko is a good, you know, um, Northern California ties at the very least. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. I mean, she's been, she, but they can't, she's cored, right? Like she's been cored enough. She's been cored she twice. So yeah. she can go wherever she wants to. Yeah. I think if you are going to have so much young talent on your team, yeah. she's probably a good person to have around. Just like yeah. keep everybody in check. I don't mm -hmm. know if she wants to do that at this phase of her career, but you know, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see.